My name is Brian Park. I am the host of the Infinite Billable Time. First of all, I want to say sorry to three guests, Tristan, John, and Hunter, for putting this podcast a month late. The reason why it took so late was because I was trying to find the iPhone footage. However, the iPhone footage is lost. I only have the audio file and the Sony a 4 footage that is directing me. So, therefore, I wanted to create this podcast as perfect as I wanted. However, it's not possible. So in this video slash podcast, I only have the footage of the audio file and the Sony a 7 IV directing me. And that's how I combine this video together. I know that this podcast is not same format as the videos I have been creating. However, this podcast will go to the other sources. And I will put down the link in description where this podcast will go. Please see the link in description to listen to the podcast only. Enjoy the infinite available time I did with three guests, Tristan, Hunter, and John. Uh, in today's episode, we have Hunter, we have Tristan, and we have John. Uh, can you guys introduce yourself? Uh, the one main thing the audience should know about. One main thing. Uh, I'm graduating in like a week and a half. Okay. <laughs> so you are like graduating from school and just out of school next yeah, week? Yeah, grad school. Yeah, I graduated last year. So I actually graduated technically in Prescott. Okay. I think we'll get more into. Oh, nice. But I was here yeah. my senior year. That was a complicated mess. Hmm. Let me tell you. Why? Well, I was kind of had a foot in both worlds. Transfer mm. process wasn't wasn't very wasn't very easy. Really? You'd think. From Prescott to Daytona You'd Beach. You'd think, right? Yeah. I did it, and it was pretty easy for me. What's your major? Uh, on manned aircraft systems. Maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> what eight, was yours? Eight, aerospace engineering. You know, the, okay. The second, you know, the most common degree I think they offer here. Yeah. And Astro Track. I don't want you to. I don't want to stop you, but closer you guys get to the microphone is sexier. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yes. Continue, please. Um. Yeah. The. Two th- flow charts between the two schools for the same degree, uh-huh. like 33 credits different. Okay. Out, out of 129 credits, 33 of them were different. So a quarter of the degree is different at the two campuses. So you have to do more here when you came here, right? No, I technically just sent all my stuff back to Prescott when I finished here. Huh. So I like, was technically all there all along and just a temporary transfer to Daytona for my senior year. Sent it all okay. back at the end. And had to like have them manually register for me for graduation. They yeah. had to manually register me for like everything here. My dining dollars were all messed up. Yeah. My EU card was all messed up. Scheduler didn't work. Uh huh. And I always had people say, "Oh, you're not on time to graduate." And <laughs> it's like it's fine. Once you graduate, it'll it'll all work out. And then I'd fly over to Arizona to walk at that ceremony. I couldn't yeah. walk at this ceremony. Plus, I didn't mind walking at that ceremony, but it was kind of an awkward flight. But when you are graduating from here, you're gonna do a ceremony here yeah, in I'll Daytona do it, Beach. Yeah, because I'm I'm a master's student now. Yeah. So, should I'll be doing it here? Yeah. All right. Next uh, guest, Tristan. Yeah, I'm Tristan Buffkin. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing about me is I'm like a actual entrepreneur, not just the one that you put in the bio and yeah, you know, yes. But we'll get into that. Yeah. John. <coughs> uh, I'm John. <laughs> yes. I have a similar situation to Hunter. I'm a transfer from... Sex year, sex year. I'm a transfer student from Prescott. Uh-huh. And I did experience the complications. They're complicated. What was your major? Uh, same as in aerospace engineering. Really? Astro track. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I did. Because uh, for mine, you just have to type it in, submit the IUT, and that was it. Dude, I swear I filled that IUT form out like five times. Really? I had to do so many IUT forms. And yeah, darn. And the where does chart. this podcast go? What do you mean? Like, where does it go? Oh, YouTube. Okay. Is it okay for you? Yeah, it is. I just I'm, I need to know my audience and like. Oh who yeah, I yeah. Do and don't name drop. Yeah, I mean it's gonna go on my YouTube channel. It's only like nine hundred something subscribers. So. And Let's growing, just say there was a growing. person in the process that wasn't really doing their job for a while. You can you can drop the name. Pretty critical. I don't I don't know if I want to do that. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. John, anything more I had to say to about the, the Prescott and Daytona Beach? Uh, well, the only weird thing is the the flow charts are slightly different. Mm-hmm. They're not slightly different. They're way different. <laughs> They're way different. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one thing that I want to bring up is um, I want to talk about 
the difference between Prescott campus and Daytona Beach campus. Oh, yeah. And one of the reasons I came here was, I mean, look at it, it's so much better, more infrastructure, more you know, modern buildings, better food, I would say. It's a, it's yes. a whole different lifestyle. Yeah. Cuter girls. Yes, yeah, That's more true. more women. Uh, which I wouldn't say beach. more women. The ratio is about the same. Really? Yeah, but we're in I Daytona, think, though. I think it's more. That's still not. By, qua- by a quantity, it's more, isn't it, from compared to Prescott? By quantity, sure. but there's also more dudes. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe an Embry specifically. But. Yeah. But between both riddles, they're both about 25%. Really? Female. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tristan. Wow. Yeah. So I want to go through about the... Um, your apps and your uh, all the things you created for the world. Uh, can you go through that? Yeah, so um, basically I have a, a background. I went to Indiana University, studied real estate and finance at the Kelly School of Business, mm-hmm. decided I did not want to live in Excel and behind a computer screen my entire life. I agree, so I agree. I, I actually like started to f- move down here to fly planes uh-huh. um, right before I was about to graduate. Yeah. And I technically graduate in May. But yeah, my app is really just designed for people who travel the world, who love to just like kind of post and organize all the photos and videos that mm-hmm. they have in a way that's like, I would say less toxic than like Instagram mm-hmm. or like TikTok. Cause yeah. you just post like your raw photos. You don't have to necessarily edit them and you can post as many as you want in an album. Okay. So like Instagram and Facebook, they're all kind of like limiting where you can only post like 10 photos and then make tag one location Mm. mine you can post literally hundreds of photos and you can filter through locations by places of interest by people you tagged by different cities you've been to and then there's just like a a, on your home profile there's an easy way to navigate through the countries you've been to cities Mm. places of interest a timeline things like that and it's all 100 percent free no ads and yeah that's good i'm not even looking to like really make a whole lot of money off of it i just saw that there was a problem out there where you couldn't post the, all the photos you wanted and like you had to basically pay for more storage on your phone. And right. so I, I looked at it through the lens of uh, my mom actually is a flight attendant for American airlines. Uh-huh. And I was like, Hey mom, you just went to Switzerland, like show me these photos. Yeah. And she had just gone like a month ago. And then she was like struggling to like find all these photos. Cause she takes photos of wherever she goes around the world, the food, uh-huh. the planes, the whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, well, it's kind of hard to see like your past trips where you've been and I didn't want to go through Facebook and mm-hmm. like find all that. So I just created a platform, uh, me and a buddy of mine, and we just recently added an, another guy to our team. He's actually the one I, I personally don't know how to do any of the like coding. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark Ros- Rosset is our uh, developer mm-hmm. and he is the same guy that worked um, from like about 2011 to 2022, 2023 mm-hmm. at Mercedes Benz. Mm-hmm. He's from Germany. He lives there now. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he does like all the design work, but he did a lot of the interior software for like Mercedes Benz. Yeah, can I actually see the app? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm it's, curious. It's uh, sorry, I'm pulling it. Up. It's called Interplace, okay. and it's all free on the App Store to download. But you basically have a feed, and like, sorry, you have a feed, and you have like your countries and like right here you have all your countries and you can just like click on say the countries and it'll show you the countries you've been to yeah and once you click on the photos like it'll show you all the photos that you've been to okay and if you just randomly click on one and you click on it you can see where it's like the parthenon Mm -hmm. the date where it went and then there's other ways to organize too from states to post timeline and then there's like a trending country Mm -hmm. cities and you can just kind of see where people that travel around the world have been like all around the world. So it's very international. Yeah. So uh, based on my understanding, it is the combination of Instagram and Facebook, but you can post as many photos as you can. And each photo, you can take the country, person. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like that and uh, Visco, V-S-C-O. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure you're familiar with that, but it kind of has a similar layout to Visco. With okay. Like, you except for like you have a cover image and then you click on the cover image and then it will show you the caption and then you can filter through by cities or mm-hmm. but it, it's 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 pretty smooth for the most part and it's really user friendly okay and we're just trying to get better with it every day yeah i'll give you a shout out right here and uh yeah that was the interplace app right yep interplace app i okay yeah uh what about the buffkin real estate operations yeah so um basically whenever i i started real estate 
at a very young age, mainly because my parents. Uh -huh. um, my parents, my dad is a home inspector and my mom was an agent. Okay. And I kind of just followed them around at a young age. And I got pretty lucky because uh, whenever I was 18 years old, I got sent back. I was playing uh, Division three basketball at a, at a college called Wabash College. Yeah. And we were a pretty tough squad ranked uh, in the nation and everything like top 10 mm -hmm. for the whole year. But we all went home because of the pandemic. And this was my first year in college and I had no money. I spent all my money going to college, putting myself through college. Yeah. And I literally had like a hundred bucks in my name. I found out that there was a supply chain issue mm -hmm. um, in my state of Indiana where I'm from, mm -hmm. where kayaks, bikes, and weights were hard to get mm -hmm. um, truckers to ship to like major retail stores like Cabela's, Dick's, Sporting Goods. Why is that? just there weren't enough truckers to like get the shipments from like one area to the next basically and yeah. i think a lot of the shipments came from like lake michigan and like okay. that area yeah and indiana is like the crossroads of america where there's like all the highways running through it yeah and i uh i monopolized the kayak bikes and weights mm. uh market mm -hmm. during the pandemic and i resold it and kind of like arbitraged the market and, and made about eighty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars started my first business and with that money I started buying and selling things at auction yeah. um, and then like fixing it up. And like a lot of it was restaurant equipment because during the pandemic, a lot of restaurants shut down. Mm -hmm. And so I was like flipping restaurant equipment on Facebook. And then I started like realizing, oh, like I should start using some of this money to flip houses with. Mm -hmm. And so I got a partner and started 1031 exchanging um, houses. What that means is when you say you buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars, um, you put a, you put 50,000 into it, then you sell it for 200. So that's $50,000 in profit. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you have to pay short term capital gains under a year, you're going to get taxed like really high, like yeah. anywhere from like 30 to 50%. So what I, if you, if you use a 1031, uh, tax exchange into real estate again, within 90 days of selling that property, you can kind of scale up. Yeah. So I took a whole year off of college to flip. 12 or 13 houses in a row yeah just like literally 15 16 hour days every single day like i remember my birthday yeah. my 20th birthday i was doing flooring all day and like <laughs> i just didn't care but yeah and then i took all that money and i was slowly buying up restaurant equipment and uh -huh. then um i ended up partnering with my dad because he is a chef he actually used to be the hard rock uh sous chef in orlando oh damn that's where i met my mom oh, wow. and uh basically i just owned a restaurant with him for three years. Yeah. Uh, we got a liquor license and then uh, we sold everything but the liquor license. And I've just been learning how to cook and run a restaurant and really lead people and manage like a whole team setting. Yeah. And then while that was all happening, I was still flipping houses. It was a lot less, mm -hmm. but it was like I, that year that we had the restaurant, we had it for three years. But the first year I flipped one house. Yeah. The second year I flipped two and the third year I flipped one again mm -hmm. and I've just been studying real estate and finance this whole time. And then I was like, I got to fly planes. And that's what I do now. Cause I love traveling mm. and that's pretty much it. I mean, my a shout out to my little brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, uh, he has this company called Buffkin Collectibles. He's 17. Yeah, that's one of your company too, right? I'm, I'm a part owner in it, but he owns the majority of it, Okay, but he does a lot of, uh, streaming on TikTok, yeah and just like sells packs and all kinds of pokemon stuff so if anyone wants any pokemon stuff yeah he has he has it on wraps i feel kind of sad for him because if you heard the news us is trying to ban the TikTok. they are yeah, yeah. and I, I think they passed the bill they did and you know for the small business owners mm -hmm. i don't think that's a good idea yeah but I don't know. Like, I know it'll affect him probably a lot because most of his business is straight up from TikTok. Yeah, he also yeah. has a website, but the majority of it's from TikTok and live streaming. But at the same time, like, it's, it's, it's very toxic just app in general. All the reels are like my platform. You don't you could post reels if you edit it outside of the app. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that, like, unless you use reels in a way that, like, can educate yourself, mm -hmm. it's not really it's so, like, detrimental for one, your mental health and yeah. two, just like your time you mm -hmm. just people waste so many times and you can just easily get like sucked into the scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it's like yeah my app that i want that i made like i want people to go and explore the world and like i don't want them on my app for hours at a day like i know that's what all these companies want because they want the engagement rate up and they want all that i want like a digital scrapbook that you can share with your friends and family yeah go and experience the real world mm -hmm. and then like see recommendations on the people that you actually know or have met yeah and see where they've been not just like just posting like the picture perfect editing everything and like yeah i think that's just overrated in my opinion yeah. so
Tristan, you look confused. Huh? No, Hunter, you look confused. No, I'm good. Yeah, you're like yeah. out of zone. I was looking at the all the signatures on the wall. Oh, yeah. But we can get back to it. I want to hear a little bit from the other guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The question I can ask is, um, Hunter and John, uh, why did you move to Daytona Beach? <laughs> uh, for me, I was the SGA president, and I did a tour here. Mm-hmm. Um, we usually do an exchange. We send the SGA here in the fall, and then yeah. the Daytona Beach one visits Prescott in the spring. Yeah. And it's just it's just a more engaging campus. It is. But I also, also kind of saw everything there. Um, I was a junior when I was the SGA president. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do a full four years there, but I already kind of wanted to do the accelerated program Mm -hmm. and they don't have a master's program over there so the only there were two options when i did the accelerated program i could either do my senior year there Mm -hmm. and graduate there or do my senior year here still graduate there yeah and then do my other year here and i figured that it made more sense to do two years here yeah so i get two years here and then three years there Mm. instead of doing all four over there and then just one extra year here plus it was a little it would have been a little challenging to get four graduate classes that counted over there Mm -hmm. because they don't have graduate classes really they have like a couple that can be scaled up Mm -hmm. to be such um and sort of count but they don't have any graduate programs so to get a graduate class you have to have to kind of work something out online yeah or do something here it was it was complicated and it wasn't going to be as good plus um more opportunity to meet more people and do more things so yeah john what about you yeah, my reason, uh, I just really didn't like it. I was, that was also it for me. <laughs> Why? It was just kind of a depressing place. Yeah. Uh, it was really boring, nothing to do. I didn't have a car, so I mean, I was just stuck in my dorm. Even though I had a car, uh, like, what, what are you going to do? It's like old, really old town. Just drive to Phoenix. It's like Yeah, Phoenix, um, you either go to California if you want, you know, prefer the long drive. Yeah. The, re- the main reason I came here was um, the U.S. program is much better here. And uh, I want to talk about the food. Oh, the food. Yeah, what do you guys think about the here campus food? I think the people complaining about Boundless or whatever. Dude, I don't get it. They, they got to they gotta visit the press campus yeah, and then come here. Yeah, they're entitled and spoiled. And Very spoiled over here. Dude, yeah, like, it's like prison food. But <laughs> at, the, at the same time, like the people complaining about press uh, parking in Prescott are spoiled and entitled. Uh, yeah. yeah, because they don't have much land area as this one, right? No, they have way more land. They do? Yeah, but they, they don't have the parking sp- spaces as much as this campus do. They don't have as big of a problem over there. Yeah, I feel like parking is more of a problem here. It's here. a lot more of a problem here. And uh, how much was the parking over there? It was 125 my freshman year and then 150 And I think it stayed. Mm. But here it's gone up every year. It's like $200 right now. Yeah, so it started at 125 and then 150 And then <sighs> that's, when it, that's when it started. To, that's when it stayed. Then it became 175 and then 225 and now this year it's 250 It's so much. And last year it was 600 for a garage pass. This year it's what? 900 for a garage pass. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So That's a lot. It is more expensive to park here. And the SGA fee is also $150, where it's 100 over there. Other than that, the tuition rate and everything else is the same. But, like, you tell people in Prescott you got a Chick-fil-A on campus. Yeah. They don't. They don't believe you. Like, they what? think you're, like, living a dream. You yeah, they're, they're kind of upset with the... Well, if they're upset, you know, they can just transfer here. It's not that easy when, <laughs> when your programs are 30. It's It would have been easier for me to transfer to a different school, actually. Mm. They probably would have accepted more credits. That's actually crazy to think about. What? That's how, that's Being how, that Embry Riddle Prescott and then Embry Riddle Daytona, and it's like such a change-up. It's, it's the polar opposite. Yeah. Like, the surroundings and the... The politics and everything surrounding the school are so complicated. Like, it's way more complicated than most universities. I had a professor here that say what you need to do just to be able to purchase a hard drive or like a flash drive is over the, off the charts. It's very similar to working with the government. What do, so what do you mean by tape. like purchasing the flash drive? Or There's so many like approvals required, red tape, you know, different. In this campus? Yeah. Well, either campus. Oh, okay. Just the school in general. Yeah. Like Maybe to get to b- purchase clothing, it's like a six page form that you have to fill out. Wow. You can just buy it off from the Facebook marketplace. Well, like purchase clothing with university dollars. It's like this shirt. Right here. Mm, yeah. Bought a thousand of these for the students. Yeah. And handed them out during athletic games. Yeah. It says Embry Riddle's football team undefeated since 1978. Kind Do we have funny. a football team? No, no that's, that's, the point. that's the point. Yeah, it's <laughs> undefeated. Oh, wait, is that an official t shirt or did you just make that? 
We made it in the SGA, and then we handed them out to all students that came to athletic events. We used but we don't have a football team. Exactly. That's the point. So, it was, a, so it was a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> it's undefeated. Okay. Damn. And so they, they were really popular, and it actually got a lot of students to come to the football games. Yeah. And if you're wondering why they're yellow, well, we had, like, that was when there was a huge shortage. Uh -huh. It took, like, three months to even get this color, but it was, like, light yellow, white, or light blue. Do we you, already did a white shirt. Do you mean, like, soccer games? Because there's no football games, right? Yeah, all the other athletic games. Yeah. Because nobody shows up to the games. Um, In Prescott? Yeah. Well, here, too. I mean, really? let's be honest. I mean, I don't go to sports team, but... Uh, mis minimal turnout for both both campuses other than hockey but that's a club sport mm. we're actually pretty good at basketball where i say we're but i don't go here but where, where? What, what, which uh basketball, basketball team the embry riddles oh, uh, oh, daytona dude. really They're, yeah basketball division two and the, yeah the basketball coach is pretty good he well the basketball coach is the third or fourth highest paid university official so i'd hope that yeah we're good. <laughs> damn because I, I don't know anything about sports and yeah he averages like 25 to 28 wins a season which they usually have about 30 to 35 games a season so Mm. It's about 60 to 70 percent win rate. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Interesting that you brought up the sports because on the fall semester we're gonna have the athletics department over here and some students from sports team in the podcast. And uh, if you guys want to join, you are welcome to join. I wouldn't. I would, but I'm not gonna be here. That's true. Where where would you? Where I'm gonna be? I'm gonna be in Alabama. I'm getting a job with the government, the Department of Defense. Okay. Working on missile defense systems. Interesting. Okay, John. Just don't shoot me Ooh. down when I'm in the air. <laughs> <laughs> send a missile to a large what city. Or what dates did you say? Huh? When did you say it's gonna be? Uh oh, for the fall. Oh yeah, I'll be here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll also be here. Okay. Yeah, as an ex-athlete, you know, a retired hooper, I might have. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, Tristan, um, I want to go through more about uh, what do you call? What's your thoughts on this campus compared to Indiana State University? Yeah, so uh, where, I, where I went, Indiana University, it's a giant Big Ten school. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a great school. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like really good business school, uh -huh. really good medical school, and then there's like forty five to fifty five thousand kids something okay. like that. And it's just it's honestly like a big party school too. So okay. it, it was a lot of fun here. Um, I, I I live with some friends. Shout out Jackson Blair, Landon Cohn. They go to uh, okay. Embry Riddle here. They they study flying. Okay. Um, and like. I really think college is like who it's like what you make of it because mm -hmm. I went to a small all male division three school mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. And I played basketball there and had a lot of friends that were basketball players. And yeah. like, it really just comes down to like, it's like garbage in garbage out or good in good out. It's like mm -hmm. what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of like students, we are all stressed with whether it's money balancing work life and, mm -hmm and schoolwork and all that that yeah. we don't a lot of us don't really get out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and i think doing things like this and just talking to people reaching out to people it yeah. really makes the difference and i think this this campus is beautiful like let's be real it is it, it is, is a, beautiful it is a very beautiful campus i love flying over it and just seeing like all the buildings and how like cool they look yeah um but i will say like indiana to me is like where i grew up where i live forever mm -hmm. and so i'm like a diehard sports i've been raised to like love in indiana athletics mm -hmm. so like that atmosphere is like just way different than something like this. Now, obviously, we're talking about there might be what three to six thousand students here. Eight thousand, eight thousand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So seventy five hundred undergrads. Yeah. So I mean, it's just completely different atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. And like, I I don't know. I I would I'm loyal to where I went. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So I'm a little biased in that aspect, but I'm I'm not sure if you saw my Instagram story, and I think you put agree on the vote that I put on. The uh, did you, did you see me? my vote stuff what instagram uh, story so i put up the instagram story so i'm a uas major in the ua 100 class uh we have to pay 175 dollars to fa to pass the exam if you don't pass it that's an f and you know basically if you want to pass the exam as a you have to pay 175 dollars for the fa test and i didn't like that what do you think if you guys were in the situation would you like that or no like paying so you have to pay to to pass the test pass the exam to take the test yeah to take the test 175 dollars and if you succeed then that's a pass but if you don't succeed there's no alternate option to pass the ex pass the class even though you went there every day i mean it sounds like something the school would do <laughs> uh, personally i didn't like that because <laughs> i mean i went i went to uh, that class every day and 
$175 for me, like, it's a lot. And, you know, taking a test, it's, they say it's you, you must pay that to pass the class. And it's like kind of forcing students to I, do that. I don't know why they want to just have that as your fee and your tuition as well. Or That's something what like I'm that, saying, you yeah. Know what I mean, because like a lot of students get loans so that they can go through college. So like yeah. I don't understand why they want to do something like that where they build that fee into the course hour or whatever. Because like, yeah. at least where, where I went, you have to pay per class or pay per hour, however it works here. But you basically pay, say, six to 8000 a semester and mm -hmm. that would and you can take 15 to you know 20 23 credits yeah and like yeah i don't know why they want to just add that to the fee like I, my business school would we would have a like a air conditioning fee or a printer fee like these weird really? like add-on fees that like yeah <laughs> like it, it was kind of interesting to see like they like i get it the school's a business they have a little bit of an endowment and all that but they have to like make money to like stay operating mm -hmm. but at the same time like yeah asking students to pay out of pocket when we're already like probably the brokest we'll ever be i know it's yeah. a little ridiculous yes i it mean is. if they're going to do that just add it to the the course description or the the course fee for whatever the class is that mm -hmm. way you could use your loan to pay for that yeah it's like extra i was cost. reading the press the tuition statement from prescott the other day i don't know why i found on there but Engineering courses or engineering students incur like an extra three hundred dollar fee a semester or something like that. Why is that? For being an engineering student, go towards labs and other stuff. Mm. And I think as well, UAS students had fees for specific courses. It was like a four hundred dollar fee per yeah. course. So maybe they build in to to it not tuition but fees. Mm. They build it into a fee at Prescott. Yeah. Maybe they don't do that here. No. Yeah. Did you take the uh, physics one one three lab class? Uh, one, uh, two, five, three. That's the version that engineers take. What do you guys do there? Random physics experience, experiments, lab reports on it. Do you think that was worth it of your time and energy? Yeah. I think hands-on experience is good. Yeah. I think it's more worth it than just learning stuff in the class, and especially theoretical stuff. Mm. I think more money needs to be put into hands-on stuff. I think clubs are a good way to do that. But in yeah. Prescott, the capstones. Mm are all funded you get four hundred dollars plus i think a hundred and fifty dollars per student and what do you do with that money you build a project okay so if you're an aero student you build a plane you try to fly it in their rc field okay um astro students i don't really know what they did because it's you can't build a spacecraft <laughs> <laughs> you can build something usually you can build like a control moment gyro method whatever i don't know yeah and you can get outside money too. You or I can fund you. I know one team had a concrete mixer that was supposed to mix lunar regolith. They had like seven thousand hmm. dollars, and one group had like twenty thousand dollars, and they built a huge liquid rocket that set three world records and went fifty thousand feet into the air. Well, uh, when was that? Uh, spring twenty twenty three. I actually knew a lot of people on the team. I think it was a huge is it a, is it an RDL? Yeah. I think that was on the Horizons newspaper. Yeah, well, yeah, it was everywhere because yeah. they set world record. Right? They set three yeah. world records. It was the the highest liquid rocket engine from any undergrad, any collegiate, um, and any amateur yeah. rocket group. Darn, forty seven thousand feet. I think they like doubled one of the world records. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean that that compared to here, they're like, oh, mock project on a spacecraft. If you were given three hundred thousand dollars, what would you do? And you, it's all made up. And hmm. let's be honest, none of those spacecrafts are actually going to fly if you put it to test. So I got a question for you guys. So what do you guys want to do after you guys like graduate with uh, your, your engineering degree? Well, I'm locked up for four years with Uncle Sam, so that's what I got today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really got a choice. <laughs> My options are still open. Uh, what I want to do is pretty broad, just be involved in the space industry as an engineer. SpaceX? SpaceX? SpaceX, yeah. Please, do please do. I want to work for at least a hundred hours. <laughs> it's, a good, it's good money. It's, it's good money because you're working light. sixty to hours. Hours <laughs> a week. light, dog. <laughs> also, you get to meet Elon Musk. You might too, potentially. Yeah. yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. spend the night at work. Yeah. yeah. But I want to be with like a private company rather than a government. So, like a private uh, rocket company. Or so I mean, just like I mean, like SpaceX. Okay. So right. basically a company that gets its money by government subsidies. Mm. So you're not directly paid by the government, but you're still direct you're indirectly paid by, paid the, by government. the government. Yeah. yeah. I I mean that type of stuff it's just so expensive that that's kind of who has to fund it almost. Yeah. Or we get mega billionaires like Musk to fund it. Yeah. That's true. You can get uh Virgin Galactic up to the 
do the little space space field trip. What's what's happening with Virgin Galactic? I'm not hearing any news from Virgin Galactic. I think they're experimental. I think they're doing some hypersonic, or not hypersonic, but supersonic jet. Yeah. To replace the Concorde. When they um. I don't really know what they do though. Because I know that SpaceX is doing awesome in uh, Blue Origins. They are doing uh, yeah. what they call the air balloon stuff, I think. Yeah, that's Bezos' company. Yeah. They're a spaceship that looks like a dick, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of rockets kind of can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think uh, in your lifetime, it's for all of you guys, in your guys' lifetime, uh, the space travel to Mars, do you think that's possible? Oh, easily. Yeah. I don't know if you can get back, though. I mean, might be a with, a re- with a reusable rocket, wouldn't that be possible? I just don't think there'll be enough fuel. I think for mm. sure we'll get there. Okay, in your lifetime. There's already like 400 people signed up to do it. That would right. be like a one-way trip, so they wouldn't come back. Really? Yeah. From NASA or from SpaceX? Just from where at. I don't know. But w- like would you like do it? One-way no. ticket to Mars? I wouldn't. You yeah. wouldn't? No, because you're leaving everybody behind. What if you were like retiring and you know just tired of life on Earth and you just die in, on Mars? Then you're gonna leave your grandkids behind. You can bring or and your kids. You can bring kids too. Then they're gonna be stuck. Yeah. <laughs> you can well, pull Matt Damon and just <laughs> make it back. <laughs> you're leaving well, everything behind. The co- the fun thing is about like, let's say your grandkids go to Mars. They could be your. They could be the generation who you know, already, the already feel bad leaving people behind in Washington, now in Arizona, mm. Alabama. <laughs> now I'm about to be leaving people behind in Florida, too. Yeah. All my people in Indiana, I don't feel bad that I left you behind. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan, would you, go to, would you go to Mars and just live up there? Uh, no. No. I think the this Earth is just too beautiful. I gotta, like, that's why I want to be a pilot is so I can actually like mm. see the whole world. And, yeah. like, I have to conquer this one first before I can get True. off. And I mean, yeah. a big planet of bread dust with potentially <laughs> a little bit of like hydrogen is just not the move mm. the thing is elon musk has already conquered this planet like yeah he really has and so i think that's why he is interested in at least sending people to mars yeah well elon might have been all over the world and you know done all those things but i i look at conquering the world in, in a different way because at the end mm. of the day like, I, I believe in god so i think that like yeah. god is the conqueror of the world and no one can actually you know conquer the world what i mean by conquer is just being able to like go and you know like alexander the great mm. go and like travel across all of the land mm. and that way i hold the same convictions I believe yeah. in god as well john what about you would you go to mars and live there i wouldn't why not no. i feel like it would be like a Prescott part two. <laughs> no, it's going to be cold. I like the sun. That's well, why, that's another, <laughs> that's another major reason I moved here. I mean, to be frank, I don't like Daytona. Really? <laughs> like it's because it's hot. No, that's the only thing I like about it. I love the weather. Oh, you do? Yeah. About Daytona beach. It's a little ratchet. I don't, know why. I don't like anything else about Daytona. Really? Like you take away the weather. So this, this like January, February, it was a slow transition into the sun again. Mm-hmm. Usually it's pretty, pretty nice weather all year round you might have like a couple weeks that are cold yeah it's like reasonably cold not cold actually but like reasonably not the best weather for a couple months yeah so then there was like really nothing good about daytona <laughs> like yeah in prescott uh, they had a snow in april i think that was pretty yeah. cool yeah took some instagram pics i know in snow. yeah i'm from the snow i was not a big fan you, you're not no I'm why not, not? just because like <clears throat> it's what you have when yeah. you're used to that i'm from washington it rains all the time so yeah. i hate the rain, hates mm. rain but it doesn't snow all that t- often so snow is fine for me yeah i just don't like the cold weather associated with that. i like warm weather yeah mm. i'd rather be hot than cold i mean i'm skinny so yeah. I'm tall and skinny so <laughs> cold weather is just terrible but the thing is when you go to mars you're not going to be freaking bare naked in the mars you're going to no, be, you're have gonna a be bundled suit. up like you're in alaska because it's always cold i yeah. just don't want to die starving and i think that's what would happen you know what i mean why like, would you starve in mars because eventually you know, already people you bring like you can't grow any food there so you just mm. have a ration supply and depending on how many people go like i just think it's just going to cause havoc because you get down to oh i don't have much water i don't have much food yeah i mean look at what happened humans have fought over resources forever true like, so yeah now put them in a place where they can't even grow their own resources and it's all limited and they know it's disappearing. Mm. Do you think that America is going to be the first one to send their people over? We're going to colonize. They're going to become colonies and then states and then we're going to have senators over there. I think it's <laughs> it's an interesting theory. I love this. Um, 
do we get like two senators call it one state i mean i don't know i think uh you know i think it's pretty possible to send people to you know several people people to mars as a test then the political parties are going to weigh in to like send their their political people there which i wouldn't like to see guaranteed two senators i'd rather see farmers and engineers in mars <laughs> i think we have more problems on earth we need to deal with personally and then also the other thing is we should if we're trying to colonize anything it should be the moon like mm. we should try to get a full-on like because it's closer colonization on the moon yeah well and then it'll be easier to lift off because it's a sixth of the gravity compared to earth mm -hmm. so it's like it'll just be a lot easier to transport from earth to moon get that under wraps where it's mm -hmm. all good and then from moon to mars true like it would because be we went to mars several years ago and there hasn't been any... Well, we sent rovers and stuff. Yeah. We didn't, like, actually go to Mars. No, no, like, uh, 19, um, you know, Apollo 11. You mean the moon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the moon, not Mars. I, don't I know, I know. No the one's moon. ever been to the Mars. No one's ever... No, I was talking about the moon. Yeah. yeah. yeah Except yeah. for Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Matt Damon. Yeah. Do you th Why do you think uh, it's impossible to grow crops on moon or Mars? It might be possible. I don't know. I think it's possible. Wouldn't it be? It's possible. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> John, what do you think? Do you think it's... I, I think so, yeah. yeah Maybe it, not on the, like, soil of Mars itself, but you could make, like, a, a, a reusable reuse, system. Yeah. Or we grow plants. Like a greenhouse type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah what, what about we just uh, bomb the moon and uh, Mars? That's what Elon said. Like, when you bomb the Mars with a uh, freaking, you know, nuclear Nuclear's, bomb, yeah. it will create the atmosphere. I don't know. We're playing with some fire there. I <laughs> like <laughs> we, we already like the fact that we all have nuclear weapons pretty much as countries. Yeah. Most, I mean, most countries. It's a little scary to think about. I mean, you, you're going to know more about that than me. Yeah. But yeah, it's a little yeah. Sus. Would, wouldn't a nuclear bomb create the atmosphere on Mars? I don't know. I don't know if it'd be a scientifically atmosphere. could create radiation. That's not the kind of atmosphere you want. Yeah, you True. definitely can't live on that. Like, right. we'll all have three eyes or something. Right. Maybe maybe it's just an oxygen bomb, though. Maybe it's a different kind of bomb. Maybe the word bomb is just like... So oxygen bomb is possible. I what don't about know. I don't know if it's possible, but maybe it's a bit large explosion of oxygen atoms. What about hydrogen bomb? That's going to cause some radiation. Oh, uh, okay. So you're saying based hydrogen on your... Hydrogen bombs are like fusion-fission reactions. Hmm. So you, based on your knowledge, uh, oxygen bomb is the best option to create the atmosphere. I don't Mars. know if that's a real thing. I just said that. <laughs> okay. Oxygen's very explosive, though. Yeah. So if you don't have oxygen, I don't know if all of those bombs would work. I think mm. we're better off trying to create, like, solid space travel to come down and back mm. and then just trying to eventually i know like the goldilocks planets that are like super super far away yeah but the best route for that would take like a group of colonizers mm -hmm. and have them be on like a ship big enough to go just keep going and try to make it self-efficient mm -hmm. and then just explore and then try to repopulate that way mm -hmm. i think that's our best bet in like having humans on a different like planet that is sustainable mm -hmm. and even then like that's some like avatar stuff where it's like mm -hmm. we're probably not gonna make that <laughs> like i mean our future generations will make that i think yeah how many kids do you want Kristen? two just two two why not why not 11 or Holy 10 yeah. <laughs> well i think personally like if you're an only child out there i'm sorry <laughs> but o most only children i feel like they don't get the same <laughs> skills that someone with like like i have a little brother mm -hmm. and i had to like learn about you know sharing and mm -hmm. just like looking out for someone and like ultimately he'll be he's like my best friend mm -hmm. so like i just don't want to have one kid and then they feel lonely and mm -hmm. then they don't have someone to relate to other than their parents so that's that's why i want at least two and i want them to be two to four years apart so mm -hmm. hopefully they could play sports together but you are the news that the population is going down the birth rate yeah elon musk thinks you need nine yeah, but I mean, Wouldn't I, you don't, want to I don't have the money for that, bro. Like, you gotta have like, <laughs> I, I I need to have a, a lot of money to have two kids because I want to pay. I I had to pay for my own college. I have to pay for my own flight training, all that kind of stuff. True. And I want to be able to give the opportunities. That I'm not saying my parents didn't give me any opportunities, but I'm just saying like I want to be able to f fulfill those opportunities for my kids so mm. they can be set up and not have to get 
an interest rate that's unfavorable. He wants to have daddy's money pay for like, a lot of <laughs> oh, other yeah. students I mean, here. If you can afford kids, you know, j- you know, just send them to an orphanage or send them to military, and that's it. The problem I probably, solved. I probably got to bounce out. Do you have any last minute questions? How many kids do you want? Two to three. Why? Why not more? Uh, more is just too many. It's chaos. Okay. And I think your quality of life can go down. Oh, for sure. You're light. You're atten- You're not going to get as much attention. Mm. Okay. I like attention. You, so. you don't want to drive a minivan, right? Have two minivans. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, unless nah. it's a unless it's a Dodge Durango with a Hellcat engine, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I saw one of those the other day. Yeah. How about you, John? I I feel like three is a good number. Well, hold up, Hunter. Thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Good to meet you, Hunter. Me. Good to meet you, Tristan. Checking out. Yes. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. John, why three or two? Well, uh, I live in a family with five kids. Okay. So, it, I mean, it's a lot, but I feel like three is a good number because, I mean, like he said, w- w- having a single child, like, that's kind of lonely. A single child is boring. Yeah. I mean, I haven't experienced it, <coughs> so I don't know, but I'd assume it's it's kind of boring. Uh, Why not Ten. Wouldn't you want to contribute to the earth of the birth rate, you know? Seeing, like, ten little Johns running around the house, (laughs) that'd be kind of chaos. Well, they're going to have, you know, have to, must have the the gap, the age gap. Because your wife cannot produce kids, like, every freaking few months, you know? I feel like, well, whoever my wife is, uh, I feel like she'd be done after three. Then you go on, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Because I am the guy. Genghis Kong that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean. (laughs) I'm the guy who truly believes that, um, you know, the birth rate is going down and I want to contribute to that. I want to have a lot of Brian Parks on this earth, you know? I mean, I think it's it's obvious the birth rate's going down. Like if I, if just my family, I look at it as my grandma had three or four, ki- uh, four kids mm-hmm. and my other, on my mo- dad's side and my mom's side had three. So there's seven between the two of them mm-hmm. and then like, most people have one to two now and, mm-hmm. it, and but the other side of that is like back in the day when the birth rate was what it was mm-hmm. we had like a lot more like people would you know with agriculture and stuff like that those yeah. type of family i'm from the midwest so mm-hmm. like those type of families would have you know eight kids to help on the farm or help like do whatever mm-hmm. and now like that that's a business people don't get into because you got to almost have to be born into that like mm-hmm. you can't really just st- be a first generational farmer nowadays mm-hmm. one too like just all the rising cost and the wage gap from like all that makes it pretty difficult too very true and and what we're doing is like with all these kids like all these kids are being forced to like go to college in a way where they feel like they won't be able to get a job or do whatever if they don't go into college mm. and then like so they have to go acquire all this debt at a young age and mm. then their mindset is oh i gotta like kind of pay back yeah pay it back and yeah. so they get more like career driven and then they they can't have kids. Well, I mean, they can have kids, but it, they start later. Mm. And so that window goes down, especially for women, because like us men, we can have kids. Like I could be probably 45, 50 and start having kids. Like I'm not probably going to do that, but yeah. like a, a woman cannot do that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's very risky. But like, yeah, that's the thing is like they have like the shelf life of, you know, with kids that's kind of going down, going down. And they get to like a three to five year little window and then mm-hmm. they like, they kind of have to freak out because they're like, oh, if I want kids, I have to do it now. And like they can freeze their eggs and all that. But I, I think that it just creates like, like in a way, I don't know how to change the system, but the system just creates a, bo- a lot of like, I don't want to say like unwanted children, but like pl- children that weren't planned, that they, they that were rushed, if that makes sense. Because hmm. like, think about it. If you're, if you're a woman that's 18, 22 years old, you probably get out of college at 21, 22. You're probably your first three to five years of your career you're probably trying to make your name for yourself, get your foot in the door, make money, your career, make money, pay off those loans from college or whatever, maybe find a place to live, that type of stuff. It's and, a sad and now reality. You're 28, yeah, now you're 28 years old before you know it, 28, 30 range, and you're like, oh, I need to have kids in the next three to five years or like, because you don't want to be, no one wants to, I, I don't want to generalize, but yeah. most people don't want to start having a kid at like 35, 40. Yeah. Because then it's like when their kid's 20, they're 60 and like, yeah. It's like when their kid's 30, they're 70. So mm-hmm. then it's like like having a, like a grandchildren and being around that, like the time with that gets smaller as you get like it, when you have kids later. But at the same time, the resource thing, like you need to have resources to provide for a child. Mm-hmm. So like we're in this rat race where we have to like 
like it's smart. Like I look at it as I'm also a man. So I'll probably, I don't have a girlfriend or anything like that, but I'll probably have a wife that's three to seven years younger than me because mm -hmm. when I'm 30 years old in the airlines, making money, doing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'll be able to find someone that's a little bit younger that like, is that I will, I will be like, Hey, don't worry about like your career as much. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not trying to take away their passion or whatever right. what the career is. But like, when I want to start a family, like it's going to be more beneficial to like, I took, took the money and time to save that away. So I could start a family versus mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's it's a whole nother problem. I think that's why girls a lot like, or women, they, they really seek these high value men that that's why money is a big deal. It's logical. I mean, it is logical. Yeah. And, the other side of it is like a lot of divorce happens because of money problems. Yeah. So like I might just be a single bachelor pilot. I don't know, man. It's a, like, thanks for bringing that up because <laughs> it is very true. And uh, it's a very sad reality, at least in USA. I don't know about the other countries, but uh, like, I don't like the system that are fixed. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you're in college, graduate, go to job, get a job, make money, marry, boom. Like, like we got to live. I know. Like, I, I think a college is, you know, some people are dropped out of college and made their life, you know, living up the life, like, from the college year. Because I think college is optional for everyone. And if we can find a way to not go to college but make a living, something that you love about, I think that's the best option to live. Because you got only one life, you know, and time is infinite and valuable. And, um, yeah. John, what do you think? Do you think we're living in a matrix? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <coughs> I feel like a lot of this is also influenced by social media. Mm. I mean, just in America, though. Like, I, I visited uh, Europe and mm -hmm. I think it was Germ Germany and Austria. Mm -hmm. And, like, the life is way different there. Like, mm -hmm. uh, at least, like, the love love life, it's not just, like, money hungry. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it more sexy? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Is it more vigorous? It's, it's more like, like genuine. Like if they like you for who you are. Uh -huh. Like, there's no, like, it, the women don't see like the money behind you. Mm. They see you for who you are. The emotion, the soul. Yeah, the personality, all that. Yeah. Well, I think also like uh, socialized like areas have make that a little bit more, like obtainable i mm -hmm. don't believe in socialism i think capitalism is the way mm -hmm. but i i do think that like when most of the government pays for your means or you live in these apartments that are all like the same and everything's like the same the people are like they're going to care about things that are about the person not about the car they drive because mm -hmm. like most europeans a lot of them don't even really have cars because yeah. they the bike or they take a train or something like that yeah so it is just a completely different lifestyle and our country is so vast that like I mean, you have to have a car in America. Like, it's really tough. I to fucking hate that. Ugh, Unless you like, live in, like, New York City or something. But, dude, yeah, you have to have a car almost. Like, God, dude, like, America must have more infrastructure. I think if we have more infrastructure, you know. Dude, it's, our country's so big. It's like, it's like how, how do you, I mean, realistically, we have, we have pretty decent in infrastructure. Look at our highways. Like, I mean, our highways will go from one point of the country to the other end. Like, it's for cars. Yes. Yeah, it's but at the same time, what drives our economy? Literally, no pun intended there, but I mean, <laughs> like, America is made so that you know, look at Ford, American built, all that stuff. You want mm -hmm. like the people to not have trains and all mm -hmm. that because you want them to drive cars and because now they have insurance. to have car insurance. Yeah, let's oh, talk about God. all yeah all the expenses of the car. Now we got gas, we got car insurance, we've got the car itself, we yeah. have the tires in the car, and it, and it just it all stacks up. And before you know it, like. The system, I, I, I kind of disagree with you when you said it's not the matrix. I 100% believe it's ma the matrix because, uh -huh. it like, is. it's the matrix. Like, it, at the end of the day, like, manifestation, things like that, those are real things. And mm. it's like helping you break the code out of the matrix. And I look at it like we're all in this rat race and we're all trying to get out. We all have bills to pay. We have these things that are like these stacked adversities that we're always going to face. That's matrix. And it's, yeah, exactly. That is what the matrix is. Is like, we all have the same type of maze we're running through. And if you don't like, you know, like Ferris Bueller said, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, like it's all going to pass you by. And like, we, like you said, we got one life. So that's why like, I, I I'm not going to lie. I flip houses, do all this stuff. But I'm still in, I'm probably the brokest I'll ever be right now. And that's because I spend all my money flying planes and yeah. 
took all my money to, you know, study finance. But I think that what I've taken away from it is like when I first started, I had like a very Dave Ramsey approach to money. Mm. And I was like, oh, I got to just save, hold on, do it, not be in debt. And then I was like, that's the dumbest thing ever. You would invest. Yeah, you have to invest in skills and things you're passionate about because yeah. that's what's going to bring you dividends in the long term. Mm-hmm. And then like if, if I didn't move here to fly planes, I would not be talking to you guys at all. You guys want to know me. I want to know you like. Yeah. And these little decisions make like at the end of the day, they'll make you money in the long run. So it's about investing in yourself, finding what you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. And then like, yeah, you got to be smart with your money and smart with your decisions. But like, don't do something that's going to mess you up, like your future or anything. Like everyone knows what's good and what's bad for them. Mm-hmm. It's just having the discipline to do it. Yeah. You know, you should go to the gym three to four times a week. You know, mm-hmm. you should eat salmon, chicken, rice, broccoli, not McDonald's, not drink Coke. You yep. should, you know, mm-hmm. drink water and milk, things like that. Like. Mm-hmm. We know what we're supposed to do. Yes. We just got to be disciplined. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what we're lacking as a country and as like a generation, I think. Like, and the dating thing we were talking about, it's pretty tough because with the internet now, like I remember my dad always be like, oh, like back in my day, you have to go talk to him for real. Like with Tinder and Bumble, all these apps, it's like these girls and these guys, like the relationships aren't like special anymore. They're more like just transactional or they're just like. They just like, if you don't like someone, well, you just get on an app and you find a new one. And yeah. like, so the, the, like, it's just toxic. That's just, it how, is. it's just so toxic. I, That's why I'm not even worried about girls. I'm worried about what I'm supposed to do. Cause I, I believe like God will send me the right women when mm-hmm. it's time. And if I work on the things I'm supposed to work on, mm-hmm. I'm like high value women are busy doing high value women stuff right now. Same with That's the true. men. So, and if I can find a girl, if I can, since I'm a man, I I can have a kid when I'm 30, 35, like Mm -hmm. there's no rush for me at 23 years old to go and find my wife. And I see all these, these kids and they're getting married. They're getting these kids. They're getting married pretty fast. fast. Yeah. And it's like, I I get, I get it. Why like my grandparents did that type of stuff, (laughs) Yeah. but it's just way different now. It is. And I don't know. We see all these high divorce rates, but it's because of that. You rush into this, rush into these relationships and you see these couples on Instagram or TikTok, and it's just not real and it's not realistic. And that's, it's sad, but like, you gotta, we gotta find something real out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, highly agree with that. And, um, yeah, John, I really want to help you get out of the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the red pill and you take it and now, uh, you know, we can go out of matrix. Okay. okay. Uh, right now it's 6.58 PM. Unfortunately, we have to end this time. That was the only time we given. Uh, Tristan and John, uh, I know that you're staying here for some time, for a while. Yeah. John, are you going to be here? I'll, I'll be here the whole summer. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have time, I can find a time schedule that, you know, have more time. We can talk more about babies, you know, technology, you know, school life. All. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thanks for joining my Infinite Valuable Time. Yep, it was us. the time that we shared was infinite and valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Infinitely valuable. Yes, thanks for coming. Thank yes. you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. It was Tristan and it was John. <laughs>